Rolex, Burberry scarf, 56 has bumps. They're having a laugh. Nails by Kame, Morella's done my hair. Steph called Tyson, don't even dare. See me on Trisha, coat of the X. Dan Charlie Chance, come on, who's next? A cider and a baby sham, a mental bird of light. Can I get my ass in gear? Cause I'm out for the night. Detonate me, baby I'm alive Do you think that... Um, or whatever, tell me what your thoughts are on um, being cast as seductresses and temptresses over virginal heroines. What are your thoughts on that? Because, I mean, you suit it, but uh, do you have any, any, any uh, particular thoughts on that now? Um... I think as you get older, I think, yeah, when I, when I was in sort of my late 20s, yeah, that was quite cool. But as you get older, I'm sort of like more, more inclined to steer to comedy. Um, and as for, you know, and, and those parts are, are good. Yes, they're good. And they've, they've treated me well over the years. But they are, they're not that deep. <laughs> and you generally just play one character. And that character is you going, mm, <laughs> I don't know, you know, uh, sort of like deep voice and sort of smoky and all kind of voluptuous. <laughs> um, but I enjoy those. And, but I also enjoy other things now. And um, I'm not going to say that I'm a serious actress at all, because I'm not. <laughs> no. So we're doing Ingrid Pitt first. Yeah, because you do actually resemble her quite a lot, I think. You have from the same sort of nosing profile. You're sort of smaller than her. She had uh, quite a large nose. And oh, did she? Yeah, but it suited her. You know, you know. It works. Yeah, it works. Yeah, I, I never noticed. Ingrid is oddly beautiful, I think. She's very. Um, yeah, I think. I just remember her accent and her sort of like flamboyancy, really. Yeah, Countess um, Dracula is a great film. Mm, I had dinner with her. I had Did you? The, mm, I had the. Oh, Chris, yes. I love this. Gonna, uh, this, yeah. this is her biggest fan. Oh, really? Oh, very flamboyant. Yeah. It, she was that. in her 60s and very loud. And when she had a drink, she got even louder. She had a, her, her husband, mm. who was a doting, doting man on her, loved her. I loved her. Loved her. Um, no, no, she seemed very, very pleasant woman. You're the actress who's played a vampire more than, you know, more than any other, but then the Scream Queen concept, that, that, does that mean anything to you personally, having pretty much pioneered it? No, well, it does in a way, because it's an achievement. It is an achievement. I know it isn't much of an achievement in life. You know, there's people that brain surgeons and all sorts of things out there. You know, people going into war and sort of like stopping, you know, Afghanistan sort of you know, nicking the oil and, you know, and stopping sort of animals being sort of like slaughtered and skinned alive. But, you know, being a screen queen to me means a lot. <laughs> I've got 666 at the base of my spine. That is the, yes, the base of my spine has got 666 with the mark of the devil. It's also Ooh. the area code for the centre of Birmingham. Oh, is it? <laughs> 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 Have you worked with Joe and Autocanated Photography and John, John Carey, the makeup artist, before? Is this your first time working with them? Um, Joe, I, this is my first time with Joe, so that's, that's a, a privilege and a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, and uh, John, I've worked with before, and smashing boy, very artistic and very creative, and his cakes are delicious. <laughs> John? Your makeup on Eileen has been sensational all day. You've gone through about five, six different looks in the space of about 20 minutes apart, you know, each time, all of the time looking as sensational as this. How long have you been doing it for? Uh, probably about 10 years. Yeah. Where, where, where do you get your direct inspiration from? Do you look to other makeup artists or artists in general? No, uh, a friend of mine taught me, um, he's called Twiggy back in Birmingham, to always use your own ideas and never use anybody else's. So I always have done. Um, I used to take inspiration from the weirdest things, just from the pattern on the clothes I was wearing, something I'd seen during the day. I haven't used food packets and things for patterns before <laughs> now. Um, just whatever caught my eye, really, or whatever I feel like at the time. 
And you, I understand you're also you're a cake decorator. Well, I've, I've seen some of your amazing work on uh, on, a mo- on mobile pictures, <laughs> but they look absolutely stunning. Yeah. Have you had any training for it? No. Just uh, everything I do, I've taught myself to do uh, because that's the way that you keep your ideas original. If you think I'd like to be able to do that and just keep practicing until you can. And um, I've been doing that since I was 11, so it's over 30 years now. And I'm production manager at a place called the Cake Gallery in Birmingham. Uh, have a look at our website. And um, <laughs> we can do pretty much anything in there, really. So it's good fun. It's nice having a job where you actually produce something, where you make something, you make people happy. <laughs> right, here we go then. This one magic happens. And I've got your costumes in the other room have ranged from the sublime to the ridiculous. We've got we've got all the Hammer Horror Brides. We've got Fra- Bride of Frankenstein. We've got all, the, all, all kinds of Miss Havisham gear and whatnot. What's the weirdest costume you think you own? I think probably the weirdest thing I've worn is I made a headdress out of newspaper, tin foil masking tape and two brooms from a Chinese supermarket. <laughs> but you wouldn't have recognised it as that when it was finished. <laughs> you could work with anyone and dress anyone famous up who do you think you choose and what would you make them what would you dress them up as well um there's a lot of people today who could probably do with my help um <laughs> <laughs> naming naming no names for fear of hate mail but you know i would love to have got hold of jane mansfield for a photo session that would have been wonderful but it's a bit late now i'm afraid have you have you been a fan of Eileen's work for a long time? Yes, yes. So I first saw her in the late nineties in Camden Palace on the catwalk, looking amazing. I followed her ever since, and then um, eventually just said hi on the. Uh, how did we? Oh yeah, you commented on one of our pictures and said, "Wouldn't it be nice to be photographed, yeah. dressed like that?" And I said, "Okay then, let's do it," and we did. <laughs> and um, we've been friends ever since. Yeah. Yes, yes, no, it wasn't. Um, I thought it was that guy. Dennis Russo. Dennis. Oh, it's Dennis yeah. Russo, yeah. Well, he looks frightening now. Does he? <laughs> oh, God. Frightening. Oh, I know what you mean by frightening. He's been to the, the plastic surgeons a Not few times. Not so much Barry Manilow, though. Have you seen him? No, I haven't seen Barry for a little while. He looks like Chris's gran. <laughs> So what is it about the world of makeup that attracts you so much? Is it the glamour? Is it is it the the, uh, the sensationalism? What about it captivates you? I don't do it for anyone else. I just do it for me. Um, <laughs> the satisfaction of it. It's like any. Um, as I say, I work with all sorts of things with cakes, uh, hair, wigs, headdresses, and so on. It's just um, it's just an outlet for sort of creative ideas and doing what I want to do really, and that keeps it a bit more exclusive. I think so rather than just spreading all over the place thinly. I'd rather just do it uh, now and again for something worthwhile. Everyone's seen Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Have you seen the Haunted Hills one that was filmed in Transylvania? It's such good fun. You know, in the, in the traditional Dracula film where they say, uh, we're not taking you any further. Yes. <laughs> and he says, you're yes. going to the castle. And, she, and she's like, oh, I'm sorry the village people will not go out at night. <laughs> she goes, oh, well, no one listens to the village people anymore nowadays. <laughs> You've got your Gypsy Philia um, clothing brand as well, haven't you? As well, what, what, what do you think about the, the vintage and the Dickensian style? Is so marketable. Uh, I, I actually think, um, well, over the years I've kept collected so many costumes. Oh my god! And um, what I thought was to put them on um, to have a sort of Gypsy Philia shop that actually styles in a certain style. Um, you know, you won't get your sort of like two-piece suits and sort of stuff like that. You'll get something special. Oh, oh God, I must say, it's not expensive. Everything is really, really cheap. Not too cheap that, you know, you not bargain basement that you think you're getting sort of some horrible, smelly old dress. No, <laughs> it's really, we're keeping the prices really low. So it's... They're really good stuff, sort of designer vintage for very cheap. And I will keep it cheap because you matter. (laughs) Now, I'm going to spray. It's just so easy to make up this face. That's that's hairspray that you spray on the face to keep it to keep it still. I'll keep it forever. But do you think do you think your um your, 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 the quirky storytelling and characterization that you have in in the courts and do you think that allows you to draw on your acting as well as your musical talents? Yeah, everything, everything. Of course, it does. It's it's about having fun, and actually, it's it, in a way, it's not about you. 
It's about entertaining you. And that's what most um, entertainers forget nowadays. They all, with this all sort of celebrity big brother, it's all about me, 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 me. But you're there to entertain and to entertain folk. Not, not get your jolly rockers off yourself, sort of like doing it. You've got to be good at what you do and you've got to be able to tell a story and make people believe. And that's what the art of acting, entertaining is about. But, you know, I think some people have lost that over the years and just think it's about them, which, yeah, okay, it isn't. It's not flattering half on and half off there. No. <laughs> no. I can imagine what the sort of 10th century prostitute felt like when she sort of <laughs> went to bed that night. Well, did they have a bed? I assume so. Yeah. They must have slept somewhere. Oh, yeah. Yes, but in the in the workhouses in this in the um, Victorian times, they had a rope, and they would pay tuppence or a penny or whatever the currency to actually lie on the rope and stand and Lord. and and uh, and relax on the rope in the workhouses. Yeah, that was their sleep. They would sleep standing up, leaning on the rope. Hey. I know they're so poor. How do you think films like Razor Blade Smile receive today? In light of all the, 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 pop, the popular culture of the vampire and the horror genre, do you think they're received differently now? I think it's lost. I think the vampire is definitely lost, especially to the adult or audience. We were talking about this um, as we were driving along. I think, uh, and I may say, I think Twilight really actually spoilt it. I've never seen a Twilight movie. I'm, I, I've never... And I, I most probably they're most probably fantastic. But I think... Vampires are for teeny boppers and they're for babies, for creches. You know, you even get little baby vampire dolls. It sort of ruined the myth. And by ruining the myth, adults don't, don't really believe anymore. Uh, saying that, I'd rather watch a vampire movie than watch a torture movie. And I have... Which of your mediums do you think you express yourself best in out of modelling and writing and acting and music? What do you think it suits you best? Which one? I th I would say I would say all of it because I love it all yeah 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 yeah. <laughs>